In today's Conscious Parenting Live, I am talking about diffusing your child's anger, even if they have ASD or ADHD. So I've um, been doing a sharing a podcast series, which is all about autism this week. Um, so I wanted to do a session that is, is kind of linked to that. Um, and if anybody is wanting to check that out, you can see the link in the um, in the notes below this. Um, if you're wanting to look at those sessions, there are three different sessions. One is called What is Autism? The second one is called um, is about demand avoidance. And the third one is about um, ADHD with with autism. So you can check those out by uh, having a look in the links below and get in the links to have a look at that podcast series. Um, but today we're talking about diffusing your child's anger and the steps are the same. If you, if your child it has a neurodominant brain or if they have a neurodivergent brain, the steps are the same. And the reason why the steps are the same is because here, obviously, I'm talking about conscious parenting and conscious parenting is all about meeting your child from a place of respect, love and empathy. So you are meeting them where they're at and you're accepting them for who they are. And that is, is, a, is a huge part of it. And the, the practical ideas and um, around practical tools, mindset tools, all of those are all coming from that basis. So that is different to the traditional parenting model, right? Which is about managing behaviour focused on rewards and punishment and um, trying to get our children to do what we want them to do and often coming from a place of um, seeing them as defiant or seeing them as willful or seeing them in those kind of ways is very much a traditional mindset, parenting mindset as well, which is different to conscious parenting. And conscious parenting the conscious parenting model is fantastic for all children but particularly if your child is autistic or has ADHD because um they uh respond even less <laughs> to that traditional model um whereas um neurodominant children will um yeah uh, can be more compliant, I suppose, and not kick against it as much. But either way, that old model doesn't work for any children and can leave you as a parent feeling, feeling rubbish and certainly your children um, feeling rubbish and controlled. And yeah, so it's so I'm going to be, so I just wanted to just put that as a basis for you, um, that the conscious parenting approaches, uh, respectful parenting, positive parenting, unconditional parenting, whatever you want to call it, those kind of ways of parenting are crucial, really, um, if your child is autistic or has ADHD. And actually it's crucial to learn for any any child so so that is a key part to diffusing your child's um anger because um yeah when you use these approaches you'll be holding space for them so now i'm going to talk about the diffusing ang the, the actual diffusing anger bit i've got some notes here you can probably see me referring to but i just wanted to cover off why those that model of approach is so much more effective, powerful and feels great instead of feeling rubbish. 
Um, so, and what I have noticed, uh, because I've been talking, I've been learning more and more over the last year about autism and about ADHD. Um, and partly for myself, because I, I, I feel that I have an ADHD profile myself from, uh, for my, uh, as a, as a human. Um, so that's partly why I've been learning more about, about that there. Um, and over the years I have supported, um, parents with children who are really struggling and quite a few of them subsequently with this kind of awakening and this awareness um have been looking into or have actually been diagnosed as well with ADHD or autism so um and when I was working with them you know, we're meeting the child for who they are with, you know, without the label. And I get that these labels can be really useful, really powerful, really empowering. Um, so let's cover off the diffusing your child's anger part. So anger, what is anger? Anger is a secondary emotion and it burns hot and it's explosive it can be really explosive and when we've got to that place of anger we're usually in a place of feeling out of control um so reasoning uh is not gonna work it's not helpful and instead of being you know when you try and reason with your child when they're in that place it adds fuel to the fire it makes it, it yeah adds fuel to the fire it makes it worse it doesn't make, make it better so you've if you've ever been in that place where you're trying to help your child and you're thinking i'm just trying to help and then it's got worse that'll be why okay so when um we're in that place for, of of being angry like if your child in that place of being angry um you have to let it burn through. It always makes me think of the going on a bear hunt story. You can't go under it. You can't go over it. You can't go around it. You have got to go through it. You've got to go through it. Um, and so in, so to help people with this, I share with them my four steps to help your child manage their big emotions. That is my blueprint. That is my structure that I created to guide people step by step through that. Now, right now, as I record this in October 2023, I have a Tantrums to Calm support series coming up within which I'm going to take people through those four steps. But if you're watching this later, you can access those four steps at any time. And I will put the links here for the tantrums to calm and the four steps if that is something you want to avail yourself of. That's a nice word, isn't it? Avail yourself. So step one I will tell you about is about listening. And obviously I'll go into more detail in the support series but it's essentially about listening bringing your presence to that moment and very importantly not adding anything um because you know when we add the reasoning in for instance we add fuel to the fire things get worse instead of getting better um so we we have to you know resist reasoning now if your child is in a place of anger and heightened emotion they might might they might also get physical so there's there's the listening bringing your presence uh listening and bringing your presence the second step is um avoiding adding anything trying to reason trying to move them through before they're ready you've got to allow it to burn you've got to allow it to um uh yeah to if you imagine it like a fire, if, if you've got a raging fire, you can't try and put that out. You'll get burned. So you have to allow it to burn through and the fuel to be used up, basically, um, when it's at that point. However, the third part that I'm talking about today is you might need to manage the environment. OK, so you might need to move things. You might need to yeah move things and manage the environment 
And then once, once that fuel has gone, once that anger has burnt through and is coming down, then you can bring in steps two, three and four of the four step process that I share. So um, that's when you can start to support your child to move through um, and to come to that place of calm and really support them. But the, the key thing here is when we try and move them on, before that has burned through, before the anger has burned through, you'll get burnt, basically. Um, so that is really, really important to remember. So I hope you found this useful today. Um, and of course, uh, I've been talking today about um, uh, uh, about supporting and diffusing uh, your child's anger even with um, ADHD or ASD. So um, it's, it's actually, it's the same process. And, but even more important, even more important because, um, yeah, it's even more important to bring those conscious parenting approaches when your child um, has autism or, uh, ADHD and you know over the last couple of weeks I was doing some CPD on a um, PDA course which is a pathological demand avoidance and and the more I look into um, all of these different things the more it keeps coming back to the conscious and gentle parenting approaches are the the key approaches to support your child, um, at which makes me smile and really heartens me because this is what I've been teaching for the last thirteen years, and I'm like, yes, that's why it's been working. That's why it's been working with the parents that I support, regardless of what's going on for their child because it's fundamental it's a fundamental way shift in how we approach parenting that still unfortunately is not mainstream which i'm just like how is it not mainstream yet it's not like this is new right it's not like this is new however it doesn't still doesn't seem to be mainstream so um yeah, let me know what you're taking away from this session today. And if you're wanting um, information on how to learn this four step process, check out the notes below. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel where I share tips and things, make sure you press the subscribe button as well so that you get notifications when there is a new session out. Currently, I am sharing them on a Thursday at midday um, at UK time. So you can come and check out old sessions here as well um, on different topics. So have an amazing rest of your week and I look forward to hearing from you.